Hey, welcome to the Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. We are your hosts, Eric Sturgeon. And I'm Russell Sorry. This podcast is about all things Wisconsin, history, music, culture, and beer. Although we don't often use strong language, the content is not intended for young audiences, so listener discretion is advised. If you love the bluegrass music you hear in this intro, please check out Dang It's from Madison, Wisconsin by visiting their website, dang-its.com. Now on to the show. All right, welcome back, everyone. This is episode number 34 of the Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. We are your hosts, Eric Sturgeon. And I'm Russ Sari. We have an exciting and special episode for you today because we have another studio birthday. Who would that be? That is my co-host, Eric the Man Sturgeon. That's that's the truth. Uh, on uh, uh, January 12th, so a couple days from now actually, um, is my birthday. So um, I cannot express how, how truly grateful I am uh, for, for all of the well wishes that I've received and, uh, and honestly the support that we've, that we've uh, collected from all of you uh, as we've started this thing. And as we mentioned on the last episode, it's just been really cool to be able to hang out with my best friend and, and drink some beers and enjoy um, – the the absolute crap fest that 2020 was and oh, for sure um 2021 kind of it, it it held a little bit of hope for all of us uh with vaccines uh being uh released and, and approved and dolly parton for all the money that she uh that gave personally to right fund on. these things so thank you uh giant tits uh dolly parton but cheers happy birthday yeah, man. to thank another you. year man yeah what am i how 33 yeah I think, right? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. All right. <laughs> if my wife if my wife was down here, she'd be able to tell me, I think. All right. Um today's main story is uh of the UW Madison and Camp Randall's jump around tradition. Awesome. Uh so the uh the band House of Pain uh has a song called Jump Around and uh we happen to use it in the stadium uh and it makes everybody go ape shit. We have great Wisconsin music from Live Tetherball tonight. We have an adult beverage review of the beer kind. We have another edition of How Many Locos You At? And a special interview with Alt Brew. So, let's jump right in. How about that? Let's jump jump around. Absolutely. Let's jump around right in. If you've ever watched or been to a Badgers game uh, at Camp Randall uh, in the UW-Madison uh, you've undoubtedly witnessed the the bevy of Badger fans react simultaneously to the loud roar of House of Pain jump around. Immediately following the end of the third quarter, uh, and you yourself may have even participated in the jump around tradition. Uh, Russ, have. have you? Yeah. Oh yeah, heck yeah. You know I haven't been to Camp Randall. Um, but you're a Badgers fan. Yeah, so. and I've and I've jumped around at my own house when I've watched at like uh, a bar or something like that. Did you have pants on? No, you were helicoptering. Okay, yeah, yep, you were ju- you were swinging around too, jumping, jump, swinging, completely everything. naked. Okay, yep, best way to do it in my opinion. But, oh, I agree. Um, the origins of this uh, specific celebration go back to uh, Homecoming 1998, uh, October 10th to be more specific, uh, when a Drew Brees led Purdue Boilermaker team was matched up against the UW Badgers. Uh, as Drew Brees and the Boilermakers were marching down the field. The third quarter came to a close, and the teams began to switch the direction of play, as they do. Uh, Out of nowhere, the speakers in the stadium were overcome with trumpets blaring the three F sharps followed by a B, and the UW student section began to lose their minds and bounce to the beat. In an almost Pavlovian response sort of reaction, now 22 years later, the tradition has become instinctive. You just know... At the tail end of that third quarter, rolling into the fourth, you're going to hear that. And then all of a sudden, it's going to be just people losing their yeah, for uh, sure. you know, minds. Um, before the fourth quarter begins, uh, House of Pain will sound, and the entire stadium will jump around. Uh, 
um, more than just a tradition in the stadium, uh, the Badgers have adopted the jump around motto and printed the slogan on T-shirts, sweatshirts, and just about anything else uh, manageable. Uh, you can wear it. You can put it on a flag, anything. They've put it on everything. Um, this even made its way to the graduation commencement ceremony, um, which is crazy. You know, right, exactly. normally those are very, I don't know, formal, tr- formal, uh, just, you know, very specific things. You know, you, you're going to hear the normal uh, ceremony music. You're going to uh, see the, the students go up to the stage, collect their, you know, false diplomas until they get their real thing. You know, but, but um, it's just funny um, oh, I agree. That, that it totally made its way there. Um, Kevin Klunder, uh, UW assistant athletic director for marketing and promotions, stated in an article I was in the press box that night. The students were jumping. It looked like popcorn to me. It was pretty neat. Uh, fortunately, Wisconsin went on to win that game. Uh, so the, the Badgers went on to finish that season 11-1. Uh, and one. They got a Rose Bowl bid and eventually beat UCLA Bruins uh, for another Rose Bowl victory. Awesome. In the 90s, we were very hot with that. Yeah, they were a great team, hot for sure. That. So, um, the, uh, uh, the, the players on the field that day also took notice. Uh, a defensive lineman, Eric uh, Wozanin, uh, recalled in an article, it was it was just crazy. We looked over and saw the student section. It was unreal. It was more than goosebumps. Uh, it was more than a confidence builder, and I, I really wish I could have uh, I could have come up with a better way to describe it. Uh, the song itself was uh, a huge hit in the on the charts, uh, reaching number three uh, in the U.S. Uh, and the horns and trumpets you hear in the opening are actually a audio sample from a 1963 song called the Harlem shuffle by Bob and Earl uh, legend has it. Then Badger tight end Ryan Sundrup uh, inactive uh, due to injury at that time was tasked with creating a playlist of popular songs to be played during lulls in gameplay. His roommate and him went to Wando's bar and grill Been there. Been there. Had a fish fish bowl. Bowl. Yeah. Uh, pumped some uh, quarters into a jukebox and got started on the assignment. Uh, they took it pretty seriously. Yeah. Sandrup's room, uh, roommate stated in an article, I would love to say the whole bar started combusting when Jump Around played, but they didn't. Um, there was actually a change of energy, though, so we figured let's put that one on the list. They couldn't have predicted what soon would follow. Continued by the stadium DJ, Jump Around was played in, 19, in the 1999 season, and fans reacted in the exact same way popcorn-like fashion, and a tradition was literally born right in front of their eyes. Uh, As classic as the Lambo Leap in uh, Lambo Field, Jump Around will live on year after year, fan after fan. Russ, what are your thoughts on this thing? It's, uh, you know, I've I've participated in the tradition, so I've definitely jumped around. Yeah. Um, You know, it was funny when that song came out, um, and I remember, like, you know, it had to be maybe later 90s, I think. What was it? 90? When it came out? Yeah. It was mid-90s. Like mid-90s, 94, yeah. That's, and that's what I thought. So I, I remember uh, a kid, that song came on the radio when I first heard it. And uh, I, w- I was a pretty young and at that time, So I, but I remember bobbing pretty hard in my mom's car when that came out. It on. was cool. I, I, there's no way, no other way to describe it. At the time in the late 90s, we were... We were we were getting some pretty cool uh, mid to late nineties um, like rapish stuff. Yeah, that was uh, um, a lot of good stuff came out. Yeah, and it I was mean, different from what we were what right. we were hearing in the earlier nineties and and in, in the eighties as well. So Snoop Dogg doggy style, dude. That's Snoop a classic. Dogg, exactly. All the all the stuff that was coming out at that time was uh, of the same fashion. Just sounded really really unique and cool. And uh, samples uh, are are no. You know, it's nothing new. People use samples all the time. The the cool hooks that you hear in a lot of songs are actually not created specifically for that song. Or Daft Punk. I mean, everything Daft Punk uses Saf- samples. A- everything's almost it. sampled. Yeah, to tell you the truth. Exactly. So, Pitbull yeah. uses samples. I mean, it, it's a common thing. So, uh, the the horn intro that you hear is uh, again not. It's not a. Um, I didn't realize that Bob and Earl. Well, exactly. You know, in 63. They, yeah, I did not realize that, actually. So. I mean, such pretty, a cool thing. Pretty impressive. Um, and, and then, you know, for the tradition to have lasted this long and that song to have gotten uh, as big as it has and stayed stayed as big as it has, you know, is, is just really cool. I know that uh, uh, House of Pain must be getting mad royalties off of the uh, off of the plays, which is cool, and, and all of the jump-around material that they are able to 
print on t-shirts and stuff. I mean, they must be gaining something off of it. I mean, if I were to make a playlist about the state of Wisconsin, that song would be on there. It would have uh, to be. Old Wisconsin Jubilee by yeah. uh, Adam Gruel and Charlie Barons. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of ones I'd put on there that yeah. are classics. The By Actually, and By? Yeah. Sweet By and By. Sweet By and By, the guy, <laughs> Webster House guy. Hit Elkhorn. Uh, Charlie <clears throat> Superzinski, I'd throw some of his stuff on there. Even though it's yeah. UP stuff, it's like the, the UP is Wisconsin. Let's you could honest. even throw Tom Petty in there. For uh, sure. From yeah, the yeah. mid mid 80s early early 80s i think 82 the the bassist uh um he, he joined the band uh, howie and uh played with them until uh the, the time of his death so yeah i mean f- even for hair metal fans uh queens the bassist was from lake geneva the new bassist so that's true if you're a metal guy if you like like the hair metal stuff yeah. dude, it's pretty cool too so yeah so honestly uh if next time you're at uh the uw uh, camp randall uh, and you're jumping around. Remember that this thing has uh, uh, some really cool deep roots and a really cool story. Uh, and uh, go Badgers on Wisconsin. Yeah, and send us a video. If you have a video of you jumping oh. around, we'd love to share it. Yeah, especially if you have one of you in the student section uh, with your, your phone cameras. Uh, that's a great uh, new invention, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can uh, send those in because I would really love to see exactly what the environment is like uh, right there in the heart and the thick of things all right we have another wisconsin music segment for y'all this one is live tetherball tonight and the song is morphine uh this was just recently featured uh, a few months ago on a cool um uh, little playlist that was created uh during uh, uh the, the quarantine area you know but uh Live Tetherball Tonight is an absolute uh, fantastic band. They're well, they're experimental yeah, minus the bear. Yeah, they kind of remind me of minus the bear, maybe experimental, a little mathy because yeah. they're kind of like spacing out the hits on the drum and stuff. And making exactly. It little, I like it. It's a little really bit cool. more of a mathematical, like math rock kind of thing too. Yeah, they, kind of like you said, maybe a little post-hardcore too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely love this stuff for sure. Definitely uh, uh, something that is m- more unique. Than, than what we generally are used to hearing, which is awesome because the the musicianship and the timing and everything is just perfect. The um, the rhythm and the rhythm section of the whole thing is just really, really good. Uh, and this song in particular is catchy. It's really nice. I agree. So without further ado, we have live tetherball tonight, Morphine. <laughs>
All right, that was live tetherball tonight. The track was morphine. Go check those guys out again. They are on Spotify, YouTube, the Bandcamp. Uh, go check them out on their um, their Facebook page as well. Interact with them. Find out when they're uh, when they're going to be out touring again uh, because they are definitely a good one to see as well. And now. For another Brewski review ski. Today we have a great one from Beloit, Wisconsin, G5 Brewing Company, who we had on the show. Tim Goers, actually, he's a really cool guy. Today we're drinking the Booze Rooster IPA, coming in at 6.7% ABV and 60 IBUs. Um, it's a very good IPA. Um, it's brewed, like I said, in Beloit, Wisconsin, and um, featuring hops of Idaho 7 and Citra, which is coming through quite a Definitely bit. Definitely get the I'm, Citra. I'm really liking that. Um, they got uh on the can it says live beer keep cold and uh that's pretty much wisconsin for me at least it's my that's exactly my how i live my life um the can's really cool it, it hits uh it's kind of like a farm like i would say farm rustic look with a rooster on it yeah pretty neat drawing um yeah i love it it's at uh you know on the can curiosity driven beer obsessed um it's I'm getting, I, I've never had Idaho 7 hops, so it's a pretty interesting flavor, wouldn't you say? Yeah, uh, and I, I, because I don't really know that, um, that that sort of uh, palate, I, I don't really know exactly what that flavor uh, is from the Idaho 7. I definitely, I know the, the citrus there. Yeah, the, the citrus coming through the Idaho 7 actually has, I would, it, like, because I know citrus pretty well, like, it's a, it's a different flavor, and I kind of like... I wouldn't say it's necessarily hazy, but it has that like um, a really good mouthfeel, I, yeah. I would guess is the term you'd oh, want to use. It's definitely. really good. It goes down really easy. Um, it's and a like, really smooth drinking beer. Yeah, and if, if you guys haven't been to G5, um, it's like a hidden gem in Beloit. I, I highly recommend you go check those guys out. Tim Goer is a great guy, the brewer over there we had on the show. Just yeah. a really cool dude. Um, but yeah, you, you gotta check this one out if you can find them stores. This is the first time I've actually seen a G5 brew on the shelf. Yeah. Which is cool. I mean, you can go there and get cans of it. You can get gr- crawlers, crawlers, crawlers and growlers, yeah. whatever. But it, like just to find uh, a can of G5 is pretty awesome to me. It's a good find out in the wild to get a brew like this. And honestly, again, it's just a really smooth, really easy drinkable beer. Yeah. You know, it's, it's. It's one of those juicy IPAs. Um, I love that there's a little tang to it. Are you getting a little bit of tang? Yeah, maybe definitely. that's from that Idaho Seven. There's just that's a what little I mean, hint of tang. There's f- over five pounds of Idaho Seven and Citra hops uh, per barrel. So if you're lucky enough to find this one on the shelf, we recommend you grab it. G5 has great beers. Um, this is the first time I saw it on the shelf, so get to your local liquor store, pick it up if you see it. Um, but that's going to include our beer review. Now on to how many locals you have. Yeah, so this one is uh, probably one of our most wild, uh, I would say. Um, we, we haven't seen somebody of this magnitude, but uh, this one comes to us from uh, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. A 60-year-old Washington woman arrested for drunk driving three times in three days while vacationing in Wisconsin. And she was uh, sentenced to one month in jail. Three times in three days. Another short one. Yeah. Um, but it's just such a crazy one. Like, could you imagine getting three DUIs in three days? I would definitely not want to do that. I mean, I just can't understand this. She's 60 years old. I mean, she's on vacation. Wisconsin, yeah, you're going to have a few brewskis. There's a lot of great breweries and beers, but, like, you just be safe. Well, I've heard, a number of, I've heard a number of different stories when people are saying uh, they were vacationing from Wisconsin out to, like, let's say the West Coast or something. Yeah. And uh, Californians and, and people on the West Coast don't drink the same way we do. And I think we lose sight of that, that uh, we have a little bit more of a drinking culture and we all have a little bit more of a drinking tolerance as well. Yeah. So when people maybe travel here and maybe they have family and stuff here, they might be uh, influenced to drink to try to maybe keep that pace and maybe they're just not ready for that. Yeah. And maybe they also didn't plan accordingly in terms of, uh, their, their ride and, and how to be safe. And you know, it just, I, I can easily see this catching up to somebody 
uh, in this type of manner. Agreed. And I mean, it's, it's so social and normal here that it's not in other states that you're going to go to. So, yeah. I mean, not necessarily, but Wisconsin probably more so than most places that when you go for a beer, it's like, it's, especially those people that are regulars where they go every day, that's their place where they go to socialize before they go home, go to bed, right. they eat a lunch, dinner there, you know, it's, it's, it's a big deal here. It's definitely built into the whole daily aspect of life. So, in this one, I, I don't necessarily you know, think this is a real case of Four loco. No, she wouldn't be drinking Four Locos, um, but she is 60 years old, and uh, she's had three in three days, so I think she's going to be a low local level. She just doesn't have the tolerance, so I'm thinking, honestly, this might be a two to four loco. Yeah, I was actually thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of a half can to a full can, so two to four is right. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking in that range, um, just, just because it sounds right to me. Um, she's 60, she's out of state doesn't have the tolerance, you know, like, and I have a pretty good tolerance. I don't drive even when I, even though I do have a good job, like tolerance, I just, I don't recommend to anyone. And like we say, you don't end up on our show. We, we don't really... want to see you or hear your name or like, we're not going to read your name, but we don't want to even like introduce the segment that you were doing something weird while drunk driving. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we certainly, uh, although we like the segment, we like to be able to um, highlight some of this uh, inherent stupidity. We also don't really want to uh, to to do it. Yeah, uh, help us eliminate the how many loco segments. If we can, <laughs> we would like to start that movement. Please remove how many loco. Exactly. No, uh, the no loco movement. Hashtag exactly. no loco. <laughs> so click it or tick it. So today we're here with Reed Mulls from uh, Alt Brewing. Um, how are you doing, Reed? Great. So can Great you give me. a... Oh. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, can you give us a little history about Alt Brew and how you guys got started? Sure, yeah. Um, so Alt Brew is based in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, we're started by the owner, Trevor. Uh, Trevor was an engineering student at UW-Madison, uh, started home brewing, uh, you know, in his in his college housing units um and then eventually he met the love of his life and found out that she had celiac and was unable to drink uh most beers uh trevor then kind of pivoted and started doing gluten-free beer uh, in 2012 he started brewing at house of brews um with a lot of uh people that have their own breweries now mobcraft um 2015 he branched out of there and Opened, formally opened up his own tap house, um, which is still where we are today, and uh, doing two barrel batches um, out of the east side of Madison right now. Awesome. Yeah, I know we love all brew. I've had quite a few now. Um, you know, I, I wish it was distributed more because you don't find it all the time, but when I do find it, that's the one I'll definitely pick up. Yeah. And we've yeah, actually... Definitely. Yeah, we're all, we're all self-distributed. Um, I'm actually the person doing the deliveries right now. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, we're in pretty much, pretty much just located in the Madison and Milwaukee areas right now. Okay. Um, up the state. I know we've tried to brew our own, uh, um, kind of like uh, celiac friendly beers by using what is that Clear Firm? Yeah, Clarity Firm. Clarity Firm, yeah. Which doesn't? Sure, yeah. It's, it's not a hundred percent. Exactly. Or you can use like sorghum too works as well. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, so our brews, our our beers are a hundred percent dedicated gluten free, meaning we don't use any ingredients that contain gluten awesome. that's awesome um, there still is some issues with using the the clarity firm um with some celiacs so we we avoid that and just stick with 100 percent gluten-free ingredients yeah i agree there's there's a certain parts per million still in that even yeah. though you're using clarity firm that's so. awesome though that you guys are are uh, dedicated to that and and uh just really 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 pay attention to that i like that so I, I got to ask, um, is there any new uh, brews coming out from uh, Alt Brewing that we need to check out? Oh, definitely. So um, we are doing kind of our winter seasonal pickoff right now. Um, we just released our Ravenswood, which is an Imperial Brown Ale. Um, we got another batch of that coming out, um, as, well, as well as Blackwater, which is our Scotch Ale. Um, the one that I'm really excited about on December 8th, we have our annual Bourbon Barrel aged release um which is an imperial brown ale that's been aged in jay henry and son's bourbon barrel um for about a year and that's coming out december 8th awesome yeah jay henry's is awesome Love jay bourbon. Henry's. so good yeah we're super fortunate to, to be able to partner with them um and keep it all in wisconsin 
That's super cool. And then uh, I know with COVID, things have been weird, but uh, are you guys open for anything currently? Yeah, so we um, we did close our tap room down right away um, in March, um, and we haven't opened. So we're our tap room is still closed. We've definitely been focusing on our pickup sales. So there's there's a lot of beer that's that normally would be just tap room beer, um, some of the experimental and, and exciting varieties. Um, they're still available. We're still brewing them. They're just available for pickup only at the tap room in Madison. Okay, good to know. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, I, I really hope we can make it up there because it's one place I haven't been to yet, yeah. but we love the beer. So hopefully we can come up there and uh, maybe talk some beer with you, Reed. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Cool. So before we let our guests go, we always ask a few questions to find out how scony you are. <laughs> And uh, they're just things that we kind of have to face living here in Wisconsin. Uh, we're going to see what, what, what uh, how you fare. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Have you ever tailgated at a Brewers, Packers, or a Badgers game? I unfortunately have not done that. No. No, none of them. Okay. Have you been to any of them? No, I have not. I am. Uh, I hail from northwestern Wisconsin, so I definitely grew up kind of in the uh, – Minnesota sports were dominant, actually. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. I mean, we had some guests on from Superior, actually, who were yeah. – uh, some of them were a little more Minnesota-leaning, so – Yeah. And, and that's fair game. Yeah, I, I've actually <laughs> been to – I've been to uh, two two games at uh, the old uh, Humphrey Dome, and then I, uh, I have not been to the new U.S. Bank Stadium in, in Minneapolis, but uh, I have stayed at the hotel right outside of it, like – a week or two before the Super Bowl, which was held there, which was cool. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a crazy time. <laughs> it I, it had to have been, yeah. And and honestly, Minnesota's kind of our brother to the West. Yeah. Honestly, we like we we we're pretty much the identical thing. We share college vi- and everything. I so. visit the Twin Cities often. Yeah, it's, I lo- I love the Twin Cities. So uh, this is a question that's a little bit highly debated, but uh, what do you consider to be up north, Wisconsin? Yeah, this is uh, definitely a debate uh, amongst me and my friends that are uh, from the eastern part of the state. Uh, I mean, for me, coming from the north, uh, it's like Wausau, Stevens Point, and then just straight across. Anything north of that, I, I think I would be uh, not offended by. Yeah, that's that's what I think, too. Anything you know, north of Wausau, north of 8, that's up north to me. Yep. All right, so next question. Have you ever milked a cow? I have done that. Yes. Uh, hey, awesome. Have you done it by hand? By hand, yep, and uh, and with equipment. So awesome. That's a huge pointer. Not a lot of people get that nope, one. Nope, you got that one. <laughs> so, have you um, ever operated a snowblower? Yes, definitely. Yeah, extra that's... extra points if it was an errands. Ooh, probably not. No, okay. yeah. I think I would have remembered that. Okay, so this is one that nobody wants to face, but have you ever hit a deer? I have hit a deer. Oh, nice. How many? It was a bar fight. Just <laughs> just one deer. It was kind of a funny experience. It was actually when I was still on my learner's permit. Oh, wow. No way. And, uh, and I have a family of six, and we were all, uh, you know, my parents and my siblings, and I had my learner's permit, so I was going to drive to the Turtle Lake Intercarney Fair, and there's a little fawn right in the middle of the right in the middle of the road. Clearly saw it. My mom was freaking out. I was like, "Don't worry, mom. I got this." Far <laughs> enough away. Um, you know, start breaking, trying to be like gentle or something. Um, but with uh, six people in the van, it was a lot different. It's harder hard to stop. So uh, the deer didn't run away. By the time I got to the deer, I was probably going under five miles an hour and just tapped it <laughs> it oh. fell over got up ran away it was fine but uh wow definitely no- could have been avoided <laughs> that's funny <laughs> nobody nobody pitched this to disney uh yeah. bambi 2 the reed mall story yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh the next question we got have you ever been to a wisconsin supper club and uh, do you have a favorite that you like um i i know i have um when i was a kid but uh I don't even know what it was called, and I definitely don't have a favorite. No, no worries. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a, like a traditional thing, so we always ask just to see what people recommend. Yeah, it's definitely losing steam now. There aren't as many as there used to be. Agreed. Um, but, you know, when you go there, you get that, that same treatment of the salad bar with all the extra dressings and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Exactly, yeah. 
So we we got a question, uh, pretty Wisconsin. Is there a alt brew we could use to brew in our uh, our using our beer brats? Um, yeah, actually, a lot of them a lot of them do pretty well. Um, depending on what you're going for, uh, part of our core four beers that are commonly available in Madison and uh, Milwaukee, um, we have our Rustic Badger, which is a farmhouse ale. Uh, that one does really well with brats. Um, and if you want to go something with a little bit a little bit more malty, uh, the our Copperhead Copper Ale also is very good with brats. Awesome. I'm definitely going to give that a try. That's that's one thing I like. You know, we, we always say this, but I hate wasting craft brews. But just to get that new flavor of brats, yeah. you know, it's just it's worth it. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. Right now we have a German Ale um, that's a limited edition that's – that I would imagine would be really, really stellar. Um, but that's probably gonna, gonna be kicked pretty soon, unfortunately. Oh, no way. Okay. Well, we got two more questions for you before we let you go today. So, uh, have you ever been to Summerfest and do you have a show that you remember that was one of the best shows you saw there? Sure. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been to Summerfest, um, definitely more recently, um, getting down to the Milwaukee area. Um, my favorite show that I saw there um, just a couple of years ago was probably Manchester Orchestra, um, oh. which is one of my favorite bands, um, and they put on a really awesome performance. I'm uh, a huge fan of Manchester Orchestra. They're awesome. Huge fan. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 they did awesome, and in the outdoor atmosphere really worked for it, so... Yeah, cool. Def- I agree. I agree. That's, that, they, uh, I I didn't get a chance to see them. I I saw some pretty good bands there, like Death Cab, and I wanted to see Manchester because it was on my list that year. But yeah, I didn't get to make it. Boniver, yeah. just yeah. a few. Oh yeah. So uh, other than uh, Alt Brew, is there another brewery, brewery tour, or a tap room that you recommend our our uh, listeners check out? Oh, I mean, they should check out every single brewery in Wisconsin. I agree. Um, uh, that's definitely one of my favorite activities uh, to do. Uh, one of my favorite Madison-based ones is uh, Working Draft. We had um, them on the show. They're awesome guys. Yeah. Yeah, super awesome. Um, really good beer. Um, yeah, I, that's that's one of my favorites. Um, but definitely uh, up in Menominee, uh, there's a lot of good breweries. I saw you had them. Um, a couple of those on the show too yeah definitely um, that's actually a fun little hub because you can get to quite a few and then you can always pop over to eau claire um oh yeah a couple there too so yep but yeah awesome reed we really appreciate your time today thank you for coming on our show um i know it was kind of a last minute thing but we really appreciate it yeah we can't oh, yeah, wait definitely. to get up there too but uh next time we're, next time we're up in the area we'll uh grab a couple beers and uh talk some brew yeah, stop by. Uh, like I said, uh, we got our Bourbon Barrel Age coming out December 8th. Um, and if you head to altbrew.com, you can go to our online store and see our current selection uh, for pickup. Awesome, Reed. You enjoy the rest of your Sunday. All right. You too. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, that concludes this episode of Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. If you enjoyed this vulgar display of Wisconsin, please like and subscribe on whatever streaming platform you prefer. And remember to hit the bell on YouTube to be notified when we release new content. Also, if you have any suggestions or ideas for future episodes, please send us an email at widrunkenhistory at gmail.com or head over to our Facebook and Instagram pages. Thanks again for listening. And remember, as always, watch out for deer on your way home.